Do you have unknown great-grandparents or great-great-grandparents? Today, I'm going to show a case study that could have only been solved using DNA. Let's get started. My research objective for this case is who were the parents of William Emmett Hunter, who was born July 1874 in Raleigh, Wake County, North Carolina. Now the test taker is his granddaughter, Sharon, and you can see Sharon's tree here. We have Sharon, her dad, and then William Emmett Hunter. Now two documents showed that William Emmett Hunter's parents were Thomas Hunter and Winnie Pierce, but I was not able to find any record of them. And this case remained unsolved until I used DNA. Now we're gonna start with the Leeds method. If you need more help with the Leeds method, I'm gonna share some links. But in general, the Leeds method often sorts our DNA matches into four clusters based on our four grandparent lines or our four sets of great grandparents. So for Sharon's DNA matches, when I do the Leeds method, I should expect to see these type of clusters. One for William Emmett Hunter's parents. So I'm expecting this Hunter Pierce cluster. Another for Winnie Huddleston's parents. So a Huddleston Polk cluster a third for the Miller-Stewart part of her tree, and a fourth for the moore Bolin. Now, here's an example of a Leeds method chart. And again, we often see these four clusters based on four grandparent lines or four sets of great-grandparents, but your results may vary. Not everyone will see those four clusters. In fact, this is what Sharon's original chart looked like. She had 69 matches between 490 centimorgans, which is where we start. And they showed up in nine clusters. But I'm going to show you how we work with those nine clusters and make something a lot more meaningful. But there was heavy overlap between red and green. Heavy overlap is when most of the people in one color are also in another. So most of the people who were red were also green. And that means they're likely from the same part of Sharon's tree. Now, when I have heavy overlap to get a better idea of it, especially to demonstrate it, I'm gonna move those clusters next to each other. For example, we don't just have the red and green. We also have the red, the green, and the light blue and the light green. They all have heavy overlap with the green. So let's move those near each other. And here I've highlighted them in orange. We have these four clusters and these three are having heavy overlap with green. So the next step is to combine those clusters. We're gonna keep just one cluster and I'm gonna save the green because it has the most people and I'm gonna delete the red, the light blue and the light green. But I don't want to lose those people who don't have green. So specifically this person, this person and this person, I don't want to lose them. And so I'm gonna add a green here in this column for those three people before I delete. Now the other colors, the blue, orange, purple, yellow, and gray, they do not have heavy overlap, so I'm going to leave them as is. And now we've consolidated or combined those four clusters into just green, and we end up with six color clusters. Not four, but that's absolutely fine. The next step when we have clusters is always to figure out how the matches in the cluster are related to each other and then how they relate to you. I spent some time identifying the clusters, and this is what I found out. The blue cluster is the Huddleston Polk. Remember, William Emmett Hunter's wife was Winnie Huddleston, and her parents were a Huddleston and Polk, and that's what the blue cluster represents. Now, the green cluster were people I didn't know, and so this is likely that Hunter Pierce mystery part of her tree. The orange were her Miller Stewart's. That's on the mother's side, her mother's side. Purple is more Bolin, yellow is just Bolin, and gray is just Bolin. Again, that's all on her maternal side. So we're not really interested in those for this case. So I am going to focus on that green mystery cluster and hope to find this Hunter Pierce part of her tree or the parents of William Emmett Hunter. Now, we also have overlap between blue and green. Overlap is when a person has more than one color. And you can see we have three people that are both blue and green. We have MB, TM, and Morgan. This actually helps support the idea that this green is the Hunter Pierce, or at least William Emmett Hunter's part of the tree. And that's because blue is his wife's part of the tree. So Winnie's, Huddleston, and Polk family. So the blue is Winnie's part of the tree. Now green, if we're suggesting that this is William's unknown family, that would make sense that some people are both blue and green. In fact, when I look at those three people, I find out that MB, TM, and Morgan 
are both blue and green, and they are all three younger first cousins once or twice removed of Sharon, and they're descendants of the couple, William and Winnie. So again, that adds credibility that this green cluster is where we need to focus. Now I want to focus on next steps. Once you've created the leads method, once you've got these clusters, they're also called genetic networks, what do you do next? And these are my five steps. We're going to go through them one by one, but first I'll just read them. We're going to identify repeating surnames in the cluster, hopefully finding specific people. We're going to diagram the cluster or genetic network matches. We're going to look for the most recent common ancestors and create a hypothesis of what we think the answer to our question is. Then we're going to verify that the amounts of DNA are appropriate for the expected relationships of these matches. And then we will finish up with traditional genealogy research. So let's start with number one, identifying repeating surnames. In this case, I'm going to just look at the top three green matches to give you an idea of how I work on this. And I've privatized them as match number one, two, and three. Let's look at these one at a time. Now here's match number one. We have this very small public link tree with only three people. And this is what the tree looks like. We have this private person. We have her father, Bullock. I've actually privatized their name. Their name was actually there, if I remember correctly. And then their grandfather, John Bunyan Bullock. And we have his years. Now, simply using that information on the grandfather, I was able to find another tree and build out this tree for this match number one. And this is a tree that I found. And here we have the John Bunyan Bullock. And I'm going to help you see into the future. So when I saw this, I didn't know what I was looking for. I would start writing down the names of the eight great grandparents is really where I start. So Bullock, something I'm not sure, Bettingfield, Pierce. Ah, there's a Pierce. Lyles, I don't know. Lyles, I don't know. So this would have been interesting to me back then because... This name Pierce, although it's spelled, spelled differently than on the record that I'd seen. But in that case, the name was Winnie Pierce. And here we have a Winifred Pierce. And her husband was supposed to be Thomas Hunter. Here we have a Thomas Bettingfield. But I would have started by writing down these eight surnames, as many surnames as I could find here. So based on this grandfather, John, John Bunyan Bullock, and the dates that we have, and probably places too, I was able to find another tree that had John Bunyan Bullock and actually went back to, if not the same person, at least the same generation as my match number one. And from that, I have these eight great grandparents. And that's usually where I start when I'm working on the leads method. And I'm writing down those surnames. I have Bullock, then an unknown, Bettingfield, Pierce, but spelled differently, but spelling doesn't matter in genealogy, Lyles, Lyles. But this is really interesting because I didn't show you the record, but the record actually showed that William Emmett Hunter's mother was Winnie Pierce. Again, spelled differently, but that doesn't matter. And here we have a Winifred Pierce and that her husband was Thomas Hunter. Here we have a Thomas Bettingfield. And so I just wrote that information down and we went on to match number two. Match number two has a tree unavailable, but that doesn't stop us. We still want to click through and see what's going on. And they actually have an unlinked public tree, and it's pretty decent size, 184 people. So here we've got something really good. And we open up that tree, and we see this information. Again, I'm going to look at those eight great grandparents. We have Baker, Perry, Bettingfield, Goswick, Watkins, Jeans, and Pierce. And here I have Bettingfield and Pierce. And so I would write those down. And again, I'm interested because when I look at this Alonzo Bedingfield, guess who his parents are? His parents are Thomas Bedingfield and Winnie Pierce, just like the couple in match number one's tree. And then I need to go to match number three. This person has a huge tree with over 9,000 people. And we look at the tree and we again look at their eight great grandparents. We have Hendricks, Rhodes, Walker, Brown, Thomas Bedingfield and Winnie Bedingfield. Tippett and Horton. This person is usually putting the spouse's name the same as the husband's. And so when I look and look at Winifred Bedingfield's parents, this is Pierce. Here is the same couple. So this was very exciting when I first saw that. And so we see that same couple. Now I'm going to look at the surnames of those top three matches. Remember, I was looking for Hunter and Pierce. I saw the one tree that had Pierce. I didn't see any Hunter's. And then I saw the three trees with Bedingfield, 
That is my target surname. And in fact, we saw all three trees going back to Thomas Bedingfield and Winnie Pierce. So that is where I'm really focused at this point. Now, the next step is to diagram this cluster, diagram the matches we've identified. That's step number two. So let's diagram it. And I have these four matches. Now, three of them are the three we've already talked about, match one, two, and three. I also found a match number four that is through a different child. So I added them to this. And we always want independent lines of descent. Independent lines of descent mean that when you come to a couple, the DNA is coming through different children, different paths, different lines of descent. And so we can be more certain that the commonality is going back to a specific couple or person. So that's the diagram and they all go back to Thomas Bedingfield and Winnie Pierce. Step number three is to look for the MRCA, the most recent common ancestors and create a hypothesis. And so again, this is a genetic network or a cluster, and they're usually going to converge at a specific couple, and then they might from there break off and go out in different directions, but you should see it highlighting a specific couple. And it's very clear here, or I've also called this a convergence couple. These matches are converging here at Thomas Pet Bedingfield and Winnie Pierce. And so here's the couple. My hypothesis is that Thomas Bedingfield and Winnie Pierce are William Emmett Hunter's biological parents. Now we go to step number four. This is verifying DNA mounts for the expected relationships. So here I've got the tester, Sharon, her grandfather, William Emmett Hunter, and I think he's a son of Thomas and Winnie. And so then I plugged in the relationship of Sharon to these different matches. So match number one is a second cousin, would be a second cousin because they share great grandparents in common. That makes them second cousins. Match number two is a second cousin twice removed. Here I've labeled match number three is a second cousin once removed. And four is like two, a second cousin twice removed. And based on these relationships, they should share a specific amount, an average, or fall within a range of a certain amount of DNA. And to look at that, I need to verify each one at a time. So we have second cousins sharing 235 centimorgans of DNA. Now to verify, we will go to dnapainter.com and the shared Cinemorgan project. And this is a free tool to access. And we will enter the amount of DNA in this box. So I typed in the 235 and then down below it, we will get this list of relationship probabilities. And really at this point, I'm looking, I don't want to see any red flags. I don't want to see anything where there's zero or even just one or 2% or something where I think that I need to step back and do some more research and make sure that I'm right. With 235 centimorgans, 57% of the time, people that share 235 centimorgans are in this category of relationships that include second cousins. And so that is a great amount, and this is not a concern. Let's look at match number two, 140 centimorgans for second cousins twice removed. Again, I will type that amount in this box, 140, and then look for second cousin twice removed. They fall here and that's 20% and 20% is great and it doesn't raise a red flag. So I'll continue. Match number three is 116 at a second cousin once removed. And so I will type in the 116 and look for second cousin once removed. They are in the 44%. Again, I'm great with that. That's not a red flag. And so let's look at match number four, 61 centimorgans. I type that in and for a second cousin twice removed is 22% and that is great. Now, another thing I want to do is see if DNA matches to Thomas Bedingfield's and Winnie Pierce's parents, because if William Emmett Hunter and therefore Sharon are descendants of this couple, we should also see DNA matches to his parents and her parents. So I'm just going a step further and checking out this information. Thomas Bedingfield's parents were Henry Bedingfield and Tabitha House, and I made this diagram. Here we have Sharon and Thomas Bedingfield, his parents, Henry Bedingfield and Tabitha House. And we see his siblings. These are Thomas's siblings. And we see that Sharon is having DNA matches to four of his siblings. And these are now, again, independent lines of descent showing that Sharon got DNA that matches Thomas's, Thomas Bedingfield's siblings. And again, I should check each of these uh, amounts of DNA to make sure they make sense. What about Winnie Pierce? Her parents were Strickland Pierce and Margaret Mitchell. I do this diagram again, and here we have Sharon and her 
um, great grandmother, if this is all correct, is Winnie Pierce. And then we see the parents and we have DNA matches to three of Winnie's siblings. And again, this creates those independent lines of descent. And we've got some strong matches again, including match number 11 that has 109 centimorgans. And we should check that amount. Now, the final step is to do traditional research. I have done extensive research and I have a video about that on Legacy Family Tree webinars. And I'm going to post an affiliate link down below. In that video, I give you a bit more background and then I go through this process and then I show you the incredible evidence that tells you so much more about this story because William Emmett Hunter was in fact born a betting field, but he changed his name not once, but twice. And it's a fascinating story. So I hope I hope you'll check it out. Now there's another piece to this. When we're working with DNA, we often, since this is a male that we're looking at and we're looking at his parents, including his father, we should look at Y DNA and see if it's appropriate. But in this case, there's no Y DNA to evaluate, and I'll show you why. So William Emmett Hunter had only two sons, one of those sons being Sharon's father. And both of those sons had only daughters, and both of those sons are also now deceased. So this line has doddered out, and there's just no one to test. Once again, I'll leave an affiliate link to this case study, which is an incredible story. I hope you'll check out. I'll also leave a few links showing you how to do the leads method and telling you more about these next steps if you're interested in that. So thanks for watching. Happy clustering. And I hope you're able to identify more of your ancestors.